Hi everyone. Today I want to go through some methods for analyzing ecological count data. By ecological count data, I mean data that have been aggregated or grouped into areas or time periods or even groups of things as counts. So counts of events in neighborhoods, for example, or counts and events, counts of events in geographical, larger geographical regions, or over periods of time. So there's a, there are strategies to analyze and count data, and they're somewhat different, or they can be somewhat different than analyzing other types of data. So I just want to go over some of the methods in R for analyzing these types of data. The first thing I'm going to do is simulate the data, so to create the actual data in the first place. So here, I've created a data frame with a population count first. So in this particular example, the ecological data represents something like a neighborhood in a city. So this is a population, the people living in a neighborhood in a city. The next variable that I create is, is a ri what I'm calling here a risk factor. So we're, we're assuming that this is the thing, this is the information they have access to, and we want to predict or come up with a model that can be used to predict the number of counts or events in a geographical area, in this particular example, based on the measure of this risk factor, this other variable. Now in the creating of the remaining step in the data, I'm going to create a frequency, an underlying frequency of the event that we're interested in. So let's say this is something like crime. So here, this risk factor could be a factor or thing that predicts crime. So let's say the levels of unemployment. If we assume that unemployment predicts at least to some degree the frequency of crime in a neighborhood, we could pretend that this is unemployment. And here, the true rate is going to be the true underlying rate of crime. I'm actually creating it here because this is going to create the last the actual frequency of events in this area, and then we're going to use this to evaluate the different approaches to modeling the data. And then finally, I'm going to create the number of events based on this underlying true rate. So let's just run this code here. So I've created a data frame and a risk factor. I've now created the true rate, which Again, that's not actually something you have in the real world. We're using it for reference, for creating the data and then for reference. And then we create the number of events. So now I should have data that look like this, a population count, some measure of risk factor. Let's say this is equivalent to something like unemployment rate. And here we have the number of events. If your data look like this, so we're ignoring this column because that's not something you'd have in the real world, but if you had data like this and you wanted to model it, this is the kind of approach you can take. Now we're going to try a few methods, and we'll discuss them briefly. One way to address this is to look is to model this relationship, assuming that the model is linear. So we'll just use ordinary least squares to solve a linear model here, and generate some predictions as well. So here we have predictions of this true unknown rate based on the model, a, li a linear model. So that's one approach we can take. It, one of the problems with this approach, let's see if it worked in this example here, is that it actually predicts some unrealistic values. So it's predicting a rate, or using it to predict a rate, but some of the rates are below zero. Well, this happens because linear models don't aren't constrained to a minimum or maximum value. So when it's fitting the model, it can result in predictions that are unrealistic. In this case, rates below zero, and that's not desirable. Another way to look, there are actually other ways to diagnose the poorness of fit, but that's just good enough for now. Um, another approach to the count data that's often used is to log transform the data. Because of some properties of the fitting process, some people will log transform the data. So in order to do this, this is a bit tricky because we actually have to play around with the count data. You can't take the natural log of zero and get a value that's useful. So we first do this little conversion here, and we set every, every op for every, um, for any observation in which the events equal zero, we reset it to a really, really small value, so something close to zero. 
And then we fit a, what I'm going to call here a log linear model. That's not quite the right word, but it's often used to describe it this way. So this is a model in which we have a normal uh, non-log dependent variable and a logged, sorry, independent variable and a log dependent variable. And then I exponentiate the predictions to make them relatively easy to uh, reinterpret in their original form. This is not exactly right, but it's close enough for these purposes. And this gives me the predictions for the log linear model. In this case, it just so happens in this particular example, none of the values are below zero, so that's good. Um, another property, however, in this particular example is it looks like the log linear values are more constrained, which could be good or bad. They tend to this tends to happen when you're using um, log dependent variables in a regression model. It tends to result in a more constrained range of values than a model without that log dependent variable. The last thing I want to do is use Poisson regression. Now this requires a little, a few preparatory steps, but not a whole lot. The idea behind Poisson regression is it's meant for analyzing count data, unlike linear regression. So it, because it's, 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 it, you input integers and it outputs values that effectively are constrained to realistic, uh, to realistic values. So you won't get predictions below zero. And, and you actually input integers themselves, uh, the actual count data. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create an overall rate. And I'm going to do this so I can get an expected number of events. And this thing here is going to be an offset that I use in Poisson regression. This is my way of taking into account population. In the other models, I took into account population by actually modeling a rate. But in Poisson regression, you don't model a rate. You, amount, you model the left-hand side of the equation is a count, and you use this offset to account for variations in population. So it's effectively doing the same thing, it's just doing it in a bit of a different way. So now we have predictions for the Poisson model, the predictions for the log linear, and the predictions for the linear. Now we might ask, which one's better? Well, uh, we could Rather than looking at this exhaustively, we'll just do a little quick couple checks of graphs. So what I'm going to do is first plot the predictions against this known, normally unknown, but in this case known true rate. And if you look at the patterns here, you'll notice that again, for the linear model, the, some of the predictions are below zero, which is not realistic. For the log linear model, much of that variability has been squished out You've taken the log of the dependent variable, and, and, and as a result, you've squished out some of the variability in the data, which may or may not be good. It depends, but that's one of the properties of it. And then the Poisson model, we have a lot more variability in the data, and none of the rates are below zero. So you're kind of getting more variation in the dependent variable in this particular example. None of the predictions are below an unrealistic value. And so there you go. And then the final step here is this kind of quick and dirty way of evaluating these models is to use this bit of code here where we look at the sum of the squared differences between the true rate and the predictions for the three different models. The first is the linear, the second is the log linear, and the third is Poisson. And if we look, we see that the in this particular example, the lowest amount of error is in the linear model. But if you were to run this same code 100 times, you'd find usually the Poisson regression model. This is my experience anyway. For this particular set up here. Usually the Poisson regression model actually has less error. I'll just run it again to illustrate that. So you can see it here. The Poisson regression model actually has the lowest error, so the lowest prediction error. So that's a summary of the basic strategy here, and we're going to build on this a little bit with some other videos to, to look at more sophisticated ways of addressing this problem and potentially improving the predictions here. But that's what I wanted to show today. Thanks. Take care. Bye.